Classic radio from MBN. It's the Sugar Creek Gang. Fables of Faith. Radio drama, a hallmark of Moody Broadcasting for over 60 years. Join us now as we take you back to another classic in MBN radio history. Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Every year at this time, Bill goes to the State University to lecture. Bill's lecture is given to the student body as a whole, but it's directed toward those studying geology and anthropology. The lecture is on the science of staying alive in the mountains and forests. You see, many of the students go into the mountains and forests to gather material firsthand under the leadership of competent guides and with the rangers constantly checking on their well-being. What Bill is trying to do is prevent the isolated adventurers from going out into the wild country and becoming casualties because they haven't the knowledge of survival. Say, we'd better perhaps get into our story. This one is called Fossil Canyon. We're ready to begin the second hour of your lecture, Bill. That's fine, Dean Sands. How's your voice holding up? Well, as long as this pitcher of water holds out, I'll be able to keep my windmill running all right. <laughs> Who ever heard of a, of a windmill run with water? <laughs> yeah, you're looking at one, sir. <laughs> I hardly think that. But I'm enjoying your sense of humor. I never tire of hearing you talk about survival in the outdoors. I'll never forget your first lecture three years ago. My, little did I realize how much knowledge and experience a man must have to, to stay alive when meeting nature face to face. But, well, we're not here to listen to me. I'll make a few introductory remarks and turn the rostrum over to you. That'll be fine with me. Uh, perhaps they have some questions first. Attention, please. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Jefferson suggested that uh, you may have some questions before he begins this second half of the lecture. If you have, uh, then you can ask them now. Yeah, I have a question, Dean Sands. I'll yield the rostrum to Mr. Jefferson, Bob. Then he can answer you direct. Uh, Bill, if you please. Thank you, Dean. Now, Bob, fire your question. Uh, your first hour lecture was interesting, but... I object to the inference you made that we're not able to take care of ourselves. Are you making that inference, Mr. Jefferson? Yes, Bob, I am. Mr. Jefferson, I think you're underestimating our ability. We're adults. It's been my experience that college students are the hardest to convince that they should keep out of the wild country. Also, it's a statistical fact that college students are highest on the casualty list. And I might add, on the mortality list. I can't swallow that, Mr. Jefferson. Why should we be the highest on the casualty list? Because you let your zest for scientific data run away with your common sense. You wander into places that even experienced guides and rangers avoid, if at all possible. You mean to tell me that I couldn't go out into the boondocks and survive? You fit the nail right on the head, Bob. Let me illustrate what I'm talking about. Perhaps a true story will convince you. Oh, it'll have to be a good one to convince me that I or any student couldn't go out into the wild country and come back alive. I'm sure you'll be convinced, Bob. Members of the faculty and student body, the story I'm about to tell you is true. 
It illustrates to perfection what I've been telling you. Dean Sands remembers this tragic story very well, even though it happened several years ago. Virgil Adams and Stanley Grimshaw, both State University students, decided to go into Fossil Canyon. Virgil and Stanley didn't know that it's 115 degrees at the bottom of Fossil Canyon, and there were a lot of other things they didn't know about that death trap. I'd sure like to find a good fossil down here, Stan. So would I. They've been found here before, only last year, as a matter of fact. Yeah? Well, Professor Glomkin would give us a good boost toward our degree if we made a real find. I'll say you would, Virg. Yeah. I'm going to make as good a collection of the, all the fossils I can find, mm. even if we don't stumble onto the big one. Mm, so am I. I'd rather find a good specimen prehistoric age. Hey, uh... We're only halfway down to the bottom of the canyon. Let's step it up and get down there before it begins to get dark. Then we can do some work. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Let's go. What's the matter, Stan? I guess it's the heat, Bird. I didn't think it was this hot down here. I didn't either. I, I'm beginning to feel the heat myself. Look at my shirt. It's wringing wet. Let's stop and rest a while. Yeah, sure. I could use a rest, too. Boy, there isn't a breath of air moving down here at all. You said it. We've still got another third of the way to go. Let's, let's stop. I'm really getting sick. Yeah, well, let, let's try to make the bottom. Then then we'll rest a long time. It, it isn't far. I don't know if I can make it, but I'll try. Man alive, it's, it's miserably hot down here. I'm beginning to feel lightheaded. Let's stop and leave our packs and gear here. Maybe that'll help. Okay. Feel any better, Stan? No. You? No. Hey, Stan, let, let, let's try to cross the canyon and get in the shade. This sun is terrific. Go ahead. I'll follow you if I can. Verge. I can't make it. I'm gonna faint. Burge, do you hear me? Uh, I hear you, Stan. You, you gotta make the shade. Uh, I can't help you because I can hardly stand on my feet myself. I can't see you, Burge. Burge, I can't make it. Help me. Don't, don't leave me out here in the heat and sun. Oh. Hey, Stan. Stan, try to get up. Do you hear me? I'll try to help you. Where are you, Stan? Stan, I, I can't see you. Water, I, I gotta get water. I, it... Virgil and Stanley made many mistakes on their trip to Fossil Canyon. The reason Virgil couldn't see Stanley was that Stanley had fallen behind a large rock. It had also fallen into quicksand. Real quicksand. And he was never seen again. Bill, uh, will you point out the mistakes that the two young men made? I'll be glad to, Dean Sands. First of all, Virgil and Stanley never should have entered the canyon in the heat of the day. They should have waited until sunset, or early in the morning is even a better time. Dean, I think continuing the story will drive home the mistakes more strongly than if I were to talk on them now. Perhaps you're right, Bill. Do as you wish. Thank you. My rangers and I were at our headquarters when we found out about this whole thing. You want me to get the phone, Bill? Thanks, pal, but I'll take it. Okay, it's probably for you anyhow. Hello, Ranger Headquarters. Bill Jefferson speaking. 
Jefferson, this is Dean Sands over at State University. Oh, yes, Dean. How are you? Physically, I'm fine, Mr. Jefferson. Mentally, I'm worried. Oh, is that right? What's on your mind? One of our students, Virgil Adams, is missing. He hasn't returned as scheduled. When was he supposed to be back, Dean? Yesterday morning. Well, perhaps he'd been delayed somewhere and couldn't get word to you. You've spoken more truth than fiction, my friend. What do you mean? Well, his classmates say that he told them he was going to Fossil Canyon. Fossil Canyon? What's the matter, Mr. Jefferson? Why, we just brought out the remains of a human being from Fossil Canyon three days ago. The week before that, we lugged out another. <sighs> this could be tragic. I'm glad I called you. Will you please check the canyon for Virgil Adams? We most certainly will. I'll call you as soon as we know something definite. Bill, you got an angry look on your face. I get scared when you get that gleam in your eye like you've got now. I am angry, pal. I'm going to get a letter off to Colonel Anders when we get back. A good, strong letter. Now, will it be about Fossil Canyon? Yeah. Something's got to be done about that place. What, I don't know. Stumpy, how many times have you been down there? Well, not any more than I have to, sonny. The only time I go into that miserable hole is to bring out greenhorn tenderfeet lashed to the back of a horse. No man in his right mind would go in there. <laughs> Here's the canyon rim. Let's hold it up, fellas. Oh, 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 boy. oh, oh boy. Now scan the canyon floor with your glasses. You might see Virgil and save time. Uh, not plenty of good idea. Yeah, there's lots of rocks and boulders down there that could hide him. You said a mouthful there, sonny. But as big as the canyon is, we might spot something that'll tell us where he's at. Well, I don't see anything. How about the rest of it? I can't see anything but rocks and more rocks. That goes for me, too. Lots of rocks, but no human being. You spotted something, Gray Wolf? There. Vulture flying over top of canyon. Oh, yes, I see him, too. Look to your rifles, fellas. We gotta keep these terrible birds off the ground. If you see him dive, then open fire. Oh, boy, you said it, Bill. Those birds give me the shivers. They only fly around the dead. Let's go! Get him, get him, get him. Come on, get him. Let's take it easy going down, fellas. When we get to the bottom, we'll stop and rest before going on. It's 115 degrees down there. <laughs> Will you tell the student body what preparations you made before going down into that natural oven? Gladly, Dean Sands. First of all, each man had four canteens of water, two for himself and two for his horse. If needed, a third one could also be used for his horse. The horse is doing all the work and needs the water. If the horse collapses, the man's in a bad way. We keep a close watch on the animals to be sure they perspire freely. That's a healthy condition and means that their bodies are cooling. On the trip into the canyon, we stopped frequently and rested the horses. Also, each man swabbed his animal's mouth to keep it moist. We kept our sun helmets pulled down, our sunglasses on, and our shirts buttoned up to the neck to keep the sun's rays off our bodies, especially the backs of our necks. After about two hours, we reached the bottom of the canyon. Oh, that's hot here. Yeah, man, why? Real wet. This heat is murderous. That's putting it mildly, pal. Let's hold up, fellas. Okay, easy boy. Oh, boy. 
Loosen the cinch straps and give the horses a chance to relax a bit before we go on. You better give them a small amount of water, too. Uh, okay, uh, we Bill. Bill. You pour the water, Henry, and I'll hold this here bucket. All right, Stumpy. Yeah, just a little bit now, Henry. You only need enough to wet their mouths and throats. We'll give them a good drink after dark. How's that? Yeah, yeah just dandy. I'll give them each a mouthful, then we can go on. Bill, I not see any signs of man here yet. I know. I've been looking around, too. Actually, we're not sure Virgil's down here. The dean said it's only supposition. But we'll have to look thoroughly anyhow. Ah, uh, not right. All right, let's get ready to ride, fellas. Henry and I'll take the west end of the canyon, and you two will take the east end. Give a yodel if you find anything. Yeah, we do. We'll, right, we'll get right at it. sure is hot down here. I'm really beginning to feel it. Take a drink of water, pal. Not too much. You'll get a waterlogged feeling. It isn't good. Just enough to keep your body from dehydrating. Oh, okay, Bill. Let's ride a long way to the West End. There's another trail leading into here. Virgil may have come down it. Uh, okay. How do you feel now? Oh, much better. That's fine. Keep a sharp eye out for anything that belongs to a man. Uh, we find nothing, old-timer. I'm glad for that. Yeah, me too, young feller. It's so hot down here that I could fry an egg on my saddle horn. If Bill and Henry don't find anything, that means this Virgil feller ain't down here. Uh, that make me happy. Hello! Stumpy! Gray Wolf! Hello! We found him! Okay, Bill, we hear you. <laughs> Guess we talk too soon, Gray Wolf. Not what I'm afraid of. We better ride and join Bill and Henry. Ah, he in plenty bad shape. I'll well, say dead. he is. Another hour it'd be all over. Let's get him into the shade and give him first aid, fellas. Henry, get a canteen and the first aid kit off a of storm, will you? Yeah, sure, Bill. Right away. All right, let's lift him together, fellas. Carry him over in the shade. Okay, Bill. Uh, I ready. Say when. You all set, Stumpy? You sure am. On the count of three. Okay, one, two... Help, Bill! I'm stuck in quicksand! Quicksand? Let's go, fellas. Henry, don't move. Right. You'll go down faster. Gray Wolf, Stumpy, hold my feet. I'm going to stretch myself out and grab him. Okay, make it fast, Bill. Not real quicksand. Hurry, hurry, Bill. Keep your arms up so I can grab him, Henry. He sink plenty quick. I'll start to sink myself soon. When I grab Henry's hands, you fellas pull away. I'll have to hold my breath because my face will be in the sand. Oh, we do that. Hold tight! We're gonna pull you out! Pull, Stumpy! Pull! That's it! Pull it out, fellas! Pull harder! Hey! I'm free! How your face feel now, Bill? You have it plenty far into quicksand. That feels okay, Gwilf. 
but my lungs would burst before Henry hollered he was free. Yeah, it was quite a scare, all right. How'd you get into that there, St. Cole, young feller? Oh, I suddenly got awfully lightheaded. Must have staggered into it. Boy, that was close. That's real quicksand. Well, thank the Lord that you're safe. I ain't know somebody that wasn't as fortunate as Henry was. Uh, what are you ta- Virgil. talking about? I'm not talking about Virgil, fellas. Well, you, mean, you mean there was another man and he fell into oh, the quicksand? Well. Yeah, that's what I mean, pal. Oh, well. Boy, who who this? Boy. Well, uh, how'd you find this yeah. out, young feller? Yeah, how come you didn't say something about it before? Yes, Bill. Well, I wasn't sure for a while. Both men wear the same size shoes. I thought that Virgil might have been doubling back on his own trail because he was delirious from the heat. Then I found definite trail signs that there were two men. Oh, not very tragic. One of them died in quicksand. Yes, it is tragic, Grey Wolf. He must have wandered into the death pit. But we can't worry about him right now. We've got to get Virgil out of here and get him to Naughty Pine Hospital. <laughs> Boy, am I glad to get out of Fossil Canyon. That place gives me the creeps. It even smells like death. Yeah, you can say that again, youngster. That there hole in the ground reminds me of an open grave. Hold it up here, fellas. Okay. Whoa, whoa, Easy, boy. Boy. whoa, Storm. Whoa, oh, Matilde. Henry, unpack the radio. I'll help Grey Wolf and Stumpy lift Virgil off of Storm. You not take Virgil out by horseback, Bill? No, Grey Wolf. I'm afraid the long ride might do him in. I'll have him picked up by helicopter. Dean, this is Bill Jefferson. Yes, Mr. Jefferson. Have you found him? Yes. He's in Naughty Pine Hospital right now. We flew him back by helicopter. The doctor says we got to him just in time. Oh, thank the Lord for that. Uh, are you going to be at your office for an hour, Dean? Well, um, I was going home, but um, I can wait for you. Will you please? It's extremely important. While you're waiting for us, will you find out if anybody else went to Fossil Canyon with Virgil? I certainly will. I'll see you in an hour. Right. Goodbye. Let's pile into the car, fellas. We're going to college. That's the story up to date, Dean Sands. Gruesome as it is. Oh, it's terrible. Why can't these young men learn by other people's experiences? We didn't take time to check for more evidence as to the identity of the other man because I was primarily concerned with saving Virgil's life. Yes, I understand, Bill. I began checking carefully after you called, and I find that Stanley Grimshaw is missing. Oh? Whether or not he went with Virgil can't be determined... Thanks, Dean. We'll check with the hospital and let you know what we find. Perhaps we can talk with Virgil. I'd like to talk with Virgil, Doctor. I'm sorry, Bill. I can't allow it. But I thought you said we got to Virgil just in time. I'm sorry I made a misleading statement, Bill. What I meant was that life was just about gone, and you found him before it was too late. He's suffering from shock, exposure, heat exhaustion, and sunstroke. I'm sorry, but you can't talk to him. Well, this is extremely important, Doctor. We're sure that another man lost his life in the canyon, but we don't know who this man is. I'd like to help you, Bill, but I've got to think of my patient first. Perhaps in a day or so you can question him. Okay, Doc. I know you would if you thought it was all right. Let's go out and talk to the students, fellas. (laughs) 
Say, young feller, can you tell me if Stanley Grimshaw hung around with Virgil Thompson? Well, they're friendly, Ranger. I'd say they palled around together. Did Stanley say anything to you about going to Fossil Canyon? Well, no, he didn't. He's my roommate, too. However, I went home over the weekend. Professor, you hear anything about Stanley and Virgil going to Fossil Canyon together? Mm, I don't recall hearing anything about that, Ranger. If I did, I would have warned them against going through with it. We're up a tree, Bill. Nobody knows a thing about those two. What now? Well, let's go back to the hospital, Henry. Perhaps we can talk to Virgil now. I'm sorry, Bill. Virgil's not responding the way he should. I'm afraid it'll be three days before he's out of the woods. Okay, Doc. But we can't wait three days. Fellas, let's saddle up and go out to the canyon and do our own sleuthing. Virgil and Person X had horses when they got here, fellas. That's right, Sonny. But they let the horses get away. Those two fellas are real tenderfeet. Uh, two men get off horses and walk down into canyon. Yeah, I wonder why they did that. They should have ridden down into the canyon. Well, perhaps they weren't experienced enough to handle the horses on a steep down grade. Let's ride down and watch for some of their gear along the way. Plenty of trail sign along here. Shouldn't be hard to find some of the gear. Oh, you plenty right, Stumpy. Hey, look up ahead there. There's some gear alongside the trail. Come get on, Come on, Come on, Jenny. Come on, boy. Whoa, Jenny. Oh, boy. I'll take this pack. Stumpy, you take the other. Henry, Grey Wolf. Look through the other gear. Oh, we yeah, do, okay, we'll look through the... Hold it. I found something, I think. Yeah, what is it, Bill? Here's a notebook with a name in it. Stanley Grimshaw. Bob, I hope you and your fellow students are now convinced that it takes knowledge and experience to survive out in the wild country. Uh, you're right, Mr. Jefferson. I'm thoroughly convinced. Well, I'm glad to hear that I've driven my point home. That's the sole purpose of this lecture. <coughs> if I can save your lives by talking to you, then my time is well spent. Uh, one more question, please. Go right ahead, Bob. Uh, how'd you close off the canyon? Well, we've put up a fence and a gate around both entrances to the canyon. On each gate is a sign. It reads... Keep out of Fossil Canyon, unless you want to become a fossil yourself. That's really sound advice, Bill. Certainly the students of State U should learn from their classmates' tragic experiences. I know that I wouldn't go into Fossil Canyon if I was paid to do it. See you next week for more adventure with... Boys and girls, this is Ranger Bill back again for just a third of a minute with an extra word of thanks to you for joining us today. Hope you'll team up with the Rangers every week at this time when your local station gives us this chance to get together. See you then.